All right, guys, we got two big matches coming up here. So this big match here is um, uh, the return of the Stadium Stampede match. I'm assuming that's going to be another cinematic type match. It's going to be the Pinnacle, which is DJ, I mean MJF, sorry, uh, Wardlow, Sean Spears, Cash Wheeler, and Dax Harwood with Tully Blanchard along there. Versus the inner circle, Chris Jericho, Le Champion of AEW, uh, Jake Hager, Sammy Guevara, Santana, and Ortiz. And the big stipulation is that if the inner circle loses this match, they must disband as a team forever. And I don't know. This, this is why I hate those kind of like stipulations because it's kind of sort of spoilery. I'm not 100% sure I'm ready to see the uh, Inner Circle um, disband. I mean, on one side, it might be good for him because, like, for example, Sammy Guevara could be, like, a bigger rising star on his own. But I don't know. When you put a when you put a thing like that, like, uh, like the Inner Circle's going to win. I'm thinking they're still going to win. But on the other side, I'm kind of divided because the Pinnacle hasn't really done shit. Like, they've been kicked out of the... Like, like, like they took over the Inner Circle's room and they got their asses kicked. And they've been losing every match they've been in. And it's kind of like, well, if they keep losing, then how are these guys a threat, like, at all? I mean, uh, I don't know, man. I still want the Inner Circle to win just because of that stupid stipulation. Because I don't want them to, to split up, you know? I mean, it would probably be, like, I guess the ultimate victory. Like, you know, MGF would be right, yeah, ha, 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 I, I took them, I took them apart or whatever. But I don't, I don't know, man. I'm going for the Inner Circle. Uh, what do you guys say? Well, I mean, that is a tough decision. I got a feeling that it's going to be the pinnacle, but here's what's going to happen. Uh, sure, they disband the inner circle, but after that, the pinnacle kind of implodes on itself, and they start splitting up. But either way, no matter which way it goes, this is a steam stampede, so of course we know Sammy Guevara is going to get hit by a golf cart. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the pinnacle... But more because more because of that storyline, you know, uh, possibility with that going forward. You know, this was another hard one for me because I agree with a lot of what you said. It's I really hate these stipulations where it's like, oh, if somebody loses, they have to break up. I mean, we just went through this with SCU. So did we really need to play another storyline? And that literally happened on the same show, like both stipulations. And it's like this one, like in a way, outshined what was supposed to be a very special moment for Christopher Daniels. So it's like, did we really need the stipulation to amp it up? I don't think we needed it. I think a stadium stampede match in itself is enough to bring eyes to this match. I, I love the pinnacle. Let's face it. They're trying to go with a four horseman esque style with that storyline. And I'm good with it. I, I mean, come on. You've got so much good talent in that group. I mean, there's just so much good talent. And if you don't believe it, I mean, just look at some of the promos that MJF cuts on a regular basis. When Sean Spears talks, he's getting better. When Wheeler and Dax are on point on the mic, like, they can't be touched as a tag team cutting promos. Like, all in all, this is just a great group. But then you have the inner circle, and they are fantastic in themselves. But do they really need to be together at this point? They've been running together for a very long time now. Jericho doesn't need them. They don't need Jericho. I think Santana and Ortiz would be just fine on their own. I think Jake Hager is hit or miss. I don't think I think he needs the group more than they need him. And we all know what Sammy's capable of. We saw him in the uh, War Games match, and he just crushed it. And that's what it was. It was War Games. It's not blood and guts. It's War Games. Let's be honest. And he was the MVP of that match from start to finish. He this whole new side of Sammy came out. So. Being pushed with what I've seen with storyline development, could this keep going? Absolutely. Unfortunately, I don't want to see it get stale, which is what it could get if this keeps going on for too long. So I think the Pinnacle gets the victory. I think they beat the Inner Circle at the Stadium Stampede match, and I think it's time for the Inner Circle to kind of go their own ways. I'm sure they'll have some special, you know, blow off segment on AEW at some point where they'll say goodbye to one another, and that'll be that. But I think it's time for the Pinnacle to start acting like elite players. Uh, no pun intended with names or anything, but they are trying to be a new elite group, and this is the perfect time to take them in that direction. 
I think uh, the Inner Circle are going to win because I have a feeling that they're going to build one more match between the two. Um, I'm not sure what they're going to do, but I just have a feeling that they're going to have one more match between them because I just don't... As popular as the Inner Circle is, it comes down to the fact that um, I just don't see the pinnacle being like this gigantic equal to the inner circle as of right now i mean they are getting better they are uh, very much stepping up their game but at the same time inner circle is so insanely popular it would be stupid to throw them away and the other determining factor for me is they're trying to push Inner Circle as being more good guys and the Pinnacle as more bad guys. And let's be honest here. I've been thinking about this a lot. There are virtually no real good guys in AEW. Like, legitimately. Really think about this. How many bad guys they have compared to how many good guys they have is insanely lopsided. Like, they have Team Taz, they have... The Pinnacle, they have, um, shit, they have the Young Bucks, they have the Elite, they have the Dark Order, they got all of these bad guys. How many good guy groups do they actually have? What, Jurassic Express and SCU's gone, so, oh yeah, and then now they got the Nightmare Collective or whatever the hell they're called, and then they have the Death Triangle, they're a bad guy faction. So who do they have? Jurassic Express and Best Friends? Like, that's it. They don't have any other good guy factions. Inner Circle could be that good guy faction. Like, you need to have a... you. The thing that everyone forgets is that everyone remembers that the Four Horsemen were huge, but everyone forgets that they were also having multiple people fight them. Like, they had to have a good to fight the bad. Flair had to have Sting. They each had to have a balance, you know? Otherwise, it becomes like the NWO, where it's so overwhelmed that everyone's a part of the NWO by the time it's over. So it's like, if everyone's a bad guy and no one's a good guy, then why the hell are they fighting each other? You see what I'm saying? Like, that's that's kind of my point. If everybody's a bad guy, I, I think... then nobody will be. Exactly. Exactly. It's the... It's that sin, that thing from Syndrome set from Incredibles. It's like, when everyone's a superhero, then no one will be. It's kind of like that, really. I'm like, at that point, why even have fucking have teams and shit? I, I'd much rather just... I'd much rather just the inner circle be that, that good guy faction, I guess. That's that. So my bet is for them. Ironic you bring that up, though, because... The inner circle is nothing but a group of bad guys. Jericho, Guevara, Santana Ortiz, Hager. Those are not guys that I think of when I think of a group of good guys. So I know, but they're portraying they're them, them as good yeah. guys compared to... Yeah, and that's the weird part is how they flipped them in one show with MJF creating his own group. They, went, they took them from one of the most dominant heel stables that they've had on the show for over a year now, and they flipped them in one night and became these great baby faces that the fans were cheering for. And it's just shocking to me because I don't look at Jake Hager and see baby face. <laughs> I don't see Santana and Ortiz and see baby faces. I see guys are going to go out there and beat the crap out of you and cheat. And it's just, I don't see, you know, lighthearted underdog, you know, baby faces out there. Like you would normally, you know, associate with that. It's not sting out there. It's, it's Ortiz. It's a, you know, it's Hager. It's, Sammy Guevara, it's Jericho. These guys make great heels, so I totally get where you're coming from on that. You're right. A heel stable does need a stable of great guys and good guys to go against to keep them great heels, and I completely understand where you're coming from on this. I could see where breaking them up could actually be more detrimental than more good, so that's an interesting take. As of right now. Yeah, I don't, the I don't thing think is... that they're not going to break up. I just think right now it'd be dumb, dude. But also, it's okay, guys. We don't need a good guy faction. You know why? Because we have Cody. Jesus. Everyone loves Cody. No, but but the thing is, the thing is, like, it's like 
the bad guys that you just love versus the bad, bad guys, the bad guys that you really want to see, you know, go away, get defeated. So it's kind of like, like they're kind of, like you said, like you don't really see Jake Hager as a good dude or whatever, but it's kind of like a mixture between the bad guys you love sort of faces versus the bad guys, the bad guys. Like, yeah, you want to see MJF it, get his fucking face, you know, be and, and whatever. It, Everyone it, it, wants to be a bad guy. Of the lesser of two evils. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Lesser but, of two evils. But when everyone is evil, it's pointless. <laughs> it's but so dumb. We it's have like, Cody. I said it's like someone saying the Punisher versus the Joker. It's like, <laughs> yeah, well, the Joker's pretty bad, but the Punisher also blows up people with a fucking bazooka. Yeah, but, but, but we, it's but, like, yeah, but they're both good. But, but, they're but, both but, good for, guys, but they're good guys. You're forgetting the all-American hero, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> you'll okay, you'll, guys. you'll beat Brandy, all them gosh okay, darn guys. foreigners. We got Brandy Rhodes. We're good. We got Brandy <laughs> Rhodes, guys. Everything's. <laughs> it's cool. We have Taz. We have Taz. Everything's fine. Look at Taz. No, no. It's all, everyone's gangsta until Luchasaurus steps into the ring. You know. <laughs> it's okay, guys. We got our mystery partner, and it's Excalibur. I'm like, God damn <laughs> No, what is his name? Brandon Cutler. There oh, are man. no words for Brandon Cutler. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you see, even fucking... You know what, Greg, well, never mind. I, I heard man, QT was... Uh... Wait, what now? Yeah, screw it. Let's just throw Glacier in there and call it a day. See, the only reason they haven't brought Glacier back is because if they do... I mean, it's going to be like main event, one after the other, man. We're going to get tired of seeing Glacier as the main event of all the pay-per-views. you got to give someone else a chance, yo. You know Kenny Omega's going to job to Glacier. We all know it. All but that's the thing, it. though, man. That's the fucking thing. They, that was a hell of a missed opportunity. If they had some big, you know how they keep making these little shows like, like uh, you know, Blood and Guts or whatever, these little pay-per-view kind of wannabe type shows during the regular episodes, Opening night of Mortal Kombat that same week, they totally should have had fucking Glazier guest star and fight against Cody or whoever. No, not Cody. Um, Omega, but Omega's like in Scorpion cosplay. Like they missed that fucking opportunity. Don't give them ideas. We don't want a WWE zombie situation. Oh god! Now that was just stupid. That was just stupid. There's a side tangent right there because I, now I know, I know, I know that like people can fight back and be like, "Well, AEW got Abaddon, but Abaddon isn't fucking killing people though. They, they got all these zombies well, that this... apparently. Well, hold on. They apparently in kayfabe devoured the Miz and Morrison or something like that, right? So, so like, are they fired? Are are they quote unquote dead? Like. Like, what happens well, there? It's so funny. Okay, so I, I will say this right now, because I watched the show. I watched that show, or at least part of it. Uh, and this is what made me laugh so hard. How they're flesh-eating monster zombies, okay? Because Damien Priest wanted a lumberjack match. Okay, so they made zombies. No fucking reason why. And then what made me laugh so hard is that apparently the zombies were so blood-hungry that they wanted the flesh, and yet none of them went after the commentary team who was right next to them. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, so they're polite zombies. Maybe they're British. Who knows? Yeah, they should have <laughs> played it off. Canadian zombies. But, but the thing is, like... They're Canadian zombies. Oh. Oops, oh, sorry. You mind if I eat your flesh? Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no, but, but, but the thing is, like... Like, okay, let's now, I mean, it's kind of a stupid way to go out too, but the thing is, that let's say the Miz is going to retire so he can focus on being, you know, a dad with his kid and maybe he'll do movies from now on or whatever. But, but like, if you're going to do some shit like that where the zombies are fucking devouring the Miz and, and Morrison and whoever else and they're, you know, obviously still working with them, it's like, what the fuck do you do there? How do you, like, I guess, quote unquote, explain when they come back next week or some shit? It's just stupid. They should have just saved it as... Like his last appearance, and that was just say, "What happened to the Miz?" Oh yeah, zombies ate him, and 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 that's it. That that's his I, final match. I said the same. This is what I said. Okay, I said this. This is my issue. I I flat out said this, and this is uh. The, I found out the reason they did it 
was because they were doing that Army of the Dead movie with uh, Batista, and they they got a apparently a seven figure deal for doing that. So I'm like, yeah, they made a million at least. So I mean, that's it's easy money, I guess. It's stupid, but I get it. Um, what made me laugh the most about it, and apparently my my comment got like like 200 likes <laughs> when Chris Jericho said really wwe zombies this is gonna set wrestling back 20 years and i responded with coming from the guy who had a feud with and i tagged up at mjf and had a goddamn tap dance routine probably not the best person to talk about what is and isn't stupid because <laughs> i I will say that. Like, we can all agree. That was stupid, right? The tap dance thing with MJF was stupid. Can we all agree on that? Very true. Very true. Oh, come on. They, they were talented. It was entertaining. And they got the fucking shirt. So, whatever. It's stupid. It diffused that entire feud with them. Because they were like, I don't trust you. I don't trust you either. Let's sing and dance. Wait, what the fuck? <laughs> Because because they see Biggie and Tupac coming up to each other and be like, yeah, you know what we should do? Our taxes. Damn right. What? Yeah, but but because because remember, remember, they they didn't trust each other, but they both hated the American hero Cody. That's what united them originally. (laughs) It's like, I hate you so much, I'm going to sing my feelings. What are you on Broadway? What the hell is this shit? And they're like, well, actually, background changes. It's like, you know what's really going to set this fuse? That's really going to set this rivalry alight? Song and dance number. Damn right. What? No. No. Who greenlit that shit? It could have been worse. (laughs) They could have tagged him with RoboCop or something stupid like that. Hey, you know what? That was awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Seeing RoboCop actually come out in WCW was kind of cool. It was stupid, but it was also kind of cool. Just to see RoboCop in a wrestling ring was kind of cool. All right. Well, anyways, guys. Um, okay, so now we got the uh, final match here. And, yeah, this is a tough one to pick. But, okay, so we got Kenny Omega with Don Callis versus Orange Cassidy and Pac the Bastard. Three-way match for the AEW World Championship. Of course, the current champ is, is uh, Omega. And, uh, yeah, so who do you think is going to win between these three guys? I... I really don't know. I mean, I, I guess it's it's Omega, but I just feel like if you have a three-way match like this, it's kind of boring to just have him retain anyways. Yes, he's been champ for a while now, hasn't he? Yeah, he's, he's had a couple of uh, title defenses, December, right? I yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, like, I don't know. I know Orange Cassidy is over as all hell. I just don't see him as champ though. Or maybe maybe later down the line. I just I just don't know, man. I, I just can't think of Cassidy fucking like defending the title belt with the little kicks he does week after week. I, I don't know. I mean I'm gonna give it to Pac just for the sake of I think I mean Kenny's got too many titles he has to drop some. And uh and that's also assuming of course that you know oh fuck never I don't know. God damn it. Fuck. It's going to be Kenny Omega. It's going to be Kenny Omega because the fucking Good Brothers and the Young Bucks and, and whoever else in the fucking kitchen sink back backstage is going to come in and cheat and whatever. Yeah, it's going to be Kenny Omega whether I want to or not. They're going to probably keep doing that. I mean, if he's going to drop a belt, he'll probably drop either the Impact belt or the Triple A belt or whatever other fucking Super Saiyan Universal belt he has. But he'll probably still keep the AEW one. So, yeah, Kenny Omega against uh, my own wishes. I think Kenny Omega is going to beat... Um, Kenny Omega is going to pin Cassidy and not Pac. And that way he retains. And then later, Pac can have a feud with Kenny in a one-on-one match. I don't know. I kind of feel the same way on that. I mean... They've had Pog for a while, and I really think it is time for him to shine. But not just yet. I think Kenny's going to hold that title for one last time. And, yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be a long-winding feud between him and Pac uh, until Pac finally wins that title. But as for right now, Kenny Omega with the pin on Orange Cassidy. So this one's 
for me, this is kind of a no-brainer. It's, it's. I think it's Kenny Omega. Um, not because Pac or Orange Cassidy can't be champion. Just right now would not be the right time for either one of them to be champion. However, it would be an interesting scenario. I believe somebody earlier pointed out Penta wins the poker chip, cashes in his poker chip against Pac. I mean, that is a storyline in itself. Would be a beautiful match. I think we know what they could do in the ring together. As oh, yeah. much as I would love to see that, only because of how much I love flips and twists and the Lucha Libre style, it's Kenny, which is going to lead to Canadian versus Canadian, Kenny versus Christian, because that's what we're eventually going to build to. It can be a transitional feud for Kenny, or by some freak chance, Christian wins the belt, and then he goes on down the road. But Kenny's the man who's, who's leading the company right now. He's the face of the company. I don't see him dropping it to Pac or Orange Cassidy right now. It's just not the right time for them. So Kenny Omega is my pick, but I'll be damned. If pa- if, if Penta wins that poker chip, I better see Pac walk out with that title because that writes itself. So that's my thoughts. So for this match, uh, I don't see Orange Cassidy winning this yet. So, yeah, I think it's going to be Kenny Omega. All right, guys. So, yeah, those are all our picks for this episode. Um, of course, you know, we still leave the floor open in case there's any random last-minute, uh, you know, uh, pre-show buy-in matches and stuff. I don't know. Lately, they've been doing a thing where they've been filling in the entire time with just interviews and uh, promo packages and all that bullshit. I don't know. I, I kind of liked it before when it did have, you know, two matches. Again, we got a huge roster here. It would be a good shot to see some of them, you know, perform and stuff like that. Uh, one thing I also want to mention is that they're making more shows apparently next year, 2022. Uh, they're going to move... Wait, yeah, they're, they're moving the show, right? They're moving um, Dynamite over to TBS, I think, isn't it? And then they got no, another... No, 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 Dynamite is staying on TNT. They're just adding a new show on TBS. Oh, okay. And that'll be like Friday. So on TBS, they're adding... Um, AEW Rampage and all that. And um, if you guys have been watching YouTube, of course, they got AEW Dark and AEW Dark uh, Elevation. The, the only thing is I'm kind of confused how Elevation works because you know that Dark is basically... Well, I don't know how it is during the COVID era, but back when you know when we still went there in person to watch the shows, the Dark, dark was actually the Dark Matches... The match before the Dynamite show would start and an extra match or two after the show, they'll just put them all together. I don't know how Elevation works, though. I don't know where those matches are coming from or if they're just, like, extra matches or some shit. I don't know. I just kind of hope that, um... Yeah, I just want them to wear these guys out. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really count Dark and Dynamite as two shows because it's basically grabbing footage from... To the same program and making two shows out of it, but uh, with Elevation and now Rampage, I just don't want them to be worn out. I don't want them to be like the whole WCW thing where you talk to a bunch of guys that come in, have a lighter schedule, they're working WCW Nitro, but then all of a sudden, oh, here's WCW Thunder, and now we're like burning these guys out again and stuff like that. I just don't want that same thing to happen. And it kind of sounds like it, kind of, sort of, right? It's like, hey, I don't care. I want I want a show on, I want them wrestling fellers on TBS. Put them on there. And they made Thunder. And now it kind of sounds like that, too. It's like, I want this AEW stuff on TBS. And we're moving, or we're having Rampage over there. So, I don't know, man. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit of history repeating itself. I think, I think they're putting too many eggs in one basket. Because the fact of the matter is... WWE has oversaturated the market. We could all agree on that. Like, they have too many shows, too many things. But they spread them out enough to the point where it took them long, a long time to do it. Like, 205 Live was late. You know, uh, main event is still technically on. But they don't push it over and over again. They have NXT, NXT UK, Raw, SmackDown, all that. But what what AEW is doing, and this is the problem, is that they have such a gigantic roster, and yet all of their stuff, uh, like a majority of their roster, 
is on their YouTube channels. And now they have a whole separate show. It's going to be on TBS. And I bet you money, I bet you money now that they're going to just hire new th- people. And those same people that are on Dark and Dark Elevation are going to stay on Dark and Dark Elevation. Because, mm. like, apparently they were, they were, the uh, DJF mentioned before that they're trying to make Dark their version of NXT. But the problem is, the problem is with that is NXT is its own separate brand from the main roster. You can't make it its own separate brand when it's all with the same within the same ring within the same area within the same people you know you can't really do that with aew because yeah i know they have high profile people but you have to let the talent grow too you can't just have the elite in every damn show it gets stale after a while i mean i mean imagine back in wcw if you saw Sting every single week, you'd get bored. If you saw Hogan every single week, you'd get bored. We saw the same people over every... I mean, hell, it's what happened with The Shield. Everyone got sick of The Shield. They were so boring after a while because you saw them every single week. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but I, I'm sick of seeing that shit. But I, I want to I see them use more of their underground talent, you know, because they got so much. They have so much of a roster, and yet they don't use any of them. Yeah. It's kind of astounding to me, you know? I mean, like, I, I just... I want them to... Sh- it, it sucks because it feels like they're falling into the same pitfalls I keep talking about that WCW did that made them fold. And I'm sick of, I'm, uh, it sucks because it's like, I'm like, are you just trying to hit every C- WCW check mark? Is that what your plan is? Because like, you're going to succeed at doing that. Because Thunder was like the first step in a ter- in a long line of terrible mistakes. Because they were, they were so focused on, hey, let's spread it out, but not use any of our real talent. Let's just keep putting the NWO guys over. So and in other words, people got sick of in other words, in another year or so, we're gonna see fucking Rollins just come up in, in like regular clothes, and he's like, "Like uh, you all know who I am, but you don't know why I'm here." Something like that. No, they're kind of fast forwarding that because they already did that with John Moxley. <laughs> oh man, that's what John Moxley was. John Moxley was the Outsiders. He was like the guy of like, "Oh, you know who I am." Like you know, you, come on, we know what he was doing. <laughs> and then they've done that. They try. They they're trying to do that already. Like, I mean, why do you think they do every single, every single um, what's it called? Uh, a battle royal. They have a to be announced every single time. I'm like, dude, come on. You can't have any of your, you can't have any of your guys on dark win a match, like on the main show. You can't put any of them on a main show, but you could totally put. You know, we definitely need the Young Bucks. We definitely need them every single week to shine. Every week. We need to polish that turd nice and sparkly. <laughs> well, Rampage is going to be an hour show, so I imagine it's going to be some of the lesser guys as well as yeah. advertising, you know, who's going to fight who at the next pay-per-view or some shit like that. So we'll see how that goes. If you want to know, you want to see how to run a proper wrestling show, watch Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor has... Every single week, for a month straight, you won't see the same matches. You won't see the same guys. Because they let everyone else shine. And now they got their whole... The women, the women's um, division, it's only 30 minutes. And it's on Wednesdays. They at least allow the women to shine. They give them the opportunity to shine. And that's what you should do. Just give them... I mean... Think about it. The only reason all these people jump ship from WWE to go to AEW is for opportunity, right? Yeah. Then why the fuck don't you give them the opportunity? <laughs> like, give them the opportunity that they signed this dotted line for in the first place. Like, look what they did with Matt, Cord- Matt Cordona. Matt Cordona is one of the best... Uh, he, the, he was one of the biggest signings they could have had... And he literally said, man, they aren't using me. They don't know what the hell to do with me. So he jumped ship, and now he's an impact. Yeah. And then they have people. They got, like, they got Priscilla Kelly. They had Elena Black. 
Um, now they got this girl named Sky Blue that I also follow. Like, they have them in matches in dark, but then they don't fucking sign them when they have them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, what's her name? Uh, Red Velvet just signed with AEW, and she's the kind of girl who's uh, already available, very well-trained. Thunder Rosa hand-trained her. She knows exactly what she's doing. She's been trained by Thunder Rosa and Booker T. Um, and if you follow enough of the indies, you'll know that um, a lot of people, you'll notice a lot of women wrestlers, that everyone goes, why are so many wrestlers trained by Booker T? And the fucked up truth of it is, a lot of trainers don't want to train women. They really don't. And it's fucked up, but it's true. Very few men want to actually train women to wrestle. So Booker T is one of those few exceptions. Mm. But like I said, it, it's it's irritating because like I said, I said the same thing to you about the women's division. You know, I mean, like they have a fuckload of women on their roster and you only see like it took them how long for them to actually start putting women on their main show? Yeah, I I'm know. like, come on, guys. Hey, even so right now, even stupid. right now, the only match you're gonna have is just the Hikaru Shida versus Britt Baker. Like, have a second women's match in there somewhere. Like, yeah, at least like. Or have, bring... have, why, why don't you have Abaddon versus Chris Statlander? That'd be a cool match. Oh yeah, there you go. Or have Jay Jay versus uh, Statlander. Like, yeah, bring you know. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'd like to see that. Like Jay versus Statlander, or have um. Like, they've even had, it's so fucked up, they've even had women from NWA come over in on Dark and Dark Elevation, and they don't even talk about it. I'm like, they don't give a shit. They don't give a shit. That If they don't give a shit, why should I? You know? I'm like, that's my whole mentality. I just, yeah. I want them to put, I want them to put as much effort in their product as they do in their marketing. It's the same thing I want for any wrestling promotion. And that's the thing. Like I said, uh, even I'm starting, you know, I'm like the like the big AEW mark and everything. But even I'm seeing the chinks in the armor. There's stuff I can't deny, you know. I mean, I'm not the kind of person yeah. to be gung-ho, super whatever. And then when someone complains about something, I'm like, no, no, no. You just don't know nothing. You don't understand wrestling. I'm like, no, I mean, there's things even I can't deny yeah. And I can't defend anymore. I'm I'm not gonna defend the uh, little sparkler show with the uh, the you know the, the barbed wire. I, I I can't defend that. You know, I, I can't defend yeah. only one women's match in a fucking three hour pay per view. I, I I can't defend that. You know. Yeah, exactly. And and it's the same thing with like I'm a big fan of NXT. I'm a big fan of Ring of Honor. I'm a big fan of uh, New Japan. If New Japan does stupid shit, if any of them, I you know me, man. I'm a hardcore New Japan fan. If they do something really stupid, I will flat out say I have no idea what the hell they're doing. <laughs> I will flat out say that. I will not hold back. I'll be like, what? Um, I mean, there's there's literally a guy in New Japan named Ryusuke Taguchi, and he, he does literally a parody of Shinsuke's Kinshasa, but he uses his ass. Oh, God. And he calls, he calls his ass the funky weapon. Oh, so, God. But they don't put a title on that guy. I'm just saying. Yeah. And that was, dude, there was a discussion about Shinsuke the other day. It was, it was on Facebook. They were talking about, remember how, yeah. how awesome he was when he first came into the ring? And, and I, yeah, I agree. He has to go somewhere else where he can actually do strong style. Because that's, that's the fucking WWE watered down strong style. Like He has to go someplace yeah, where he could do it while he still can before he gets too old or whatever. Yeah, exactly. And he, I mean... He is, Shinsuke is like a sport, him and like, I mean, hell, even even if you followed Kenny Omega's career, I know you, you like Kenny Omega, but if you watched, if I showed you a match from New Japan of Kenny Omega and Kenny Omega now, the contrast is insanely different. Like, it is astounding how slow he's gotten. Like, I'm not saying he's bad. He's very good still. Even a half-assed Kenny Omega at most. But to the level that he was to go now is like, god damn. It's like seeing a sports car driving into a Walmart. It's like, oh, <laughs> it's, like no. it's like it's like seeing a it's like seeing a Ferrari driving five miles an hour in a school zone. Oh god. Like you could tell, like, oh man, that is so hard for that guy to hold that accelerator. Like that's that's what I see when I see Kenny. 
Now, one thing like, I heard. Will, of... you know, Will, Will, you watch New Japan. You know what I'm talking about, right? Oh yeah, I definitely do. <laughs> One of the things I've uh, heard, and you might know more about this than I did, but I heard somewhere in some, like, wrestling forum, um, doesn't Kenny Omega have some kind of, uh, like, I guess, lingering injury or something that he should really get looked at? I, I've been hearing that he has either a bad shoulder, a bad hip, or something, something that has to be looked at that he's been putting off because, obviously, if he gets that kind of surgery, he'll be, you know, sidelined for a couple of months, and, of course... Depending on your career, that could be like the kiss of death. You're you're like uh, off TV, whatever. But uh, I heard I, that I don't. No, I, I think he might. I'm not too sure because I notice sometimes when he wrestles, um, he favors one side over the other, so it might be a hip injury. I do know. I mentioned this before. Um, Matt Jackson has. Remember, I told you he has the time bomb injury where. Um, he has a uh, an issue with his knee. Yeah, years uh, months months ago when he did that spot where they jumped off the stage, he landed on his. It was like a, about it almost like it was like when they won the title before they won the titles, and he did his dive off the stage and he did like a dive like a elbow drop. He landed on his knee directly, and he has what's called a time bomb injury in the NFL, where you'll see a runner have an injury already and they don't get it looked at by a doctor and then they'll run and run and their kneecap will just look like it almost explodes and then they'll just collapse to the ground like nick jackson has one of those or matt jackson has one of those injuries right now so it's only a matter of time before either he get he loses that title or it's it's going to get taken from him without his say you know and like i think kenny is like kenny when kenny wrestled in the G1 Climax 28, he had, and he, he, the entire G1 Climax 28, he had a completely fractured ankle, and yet he still was almost undefeated in the G1, and he had three separate five-star matches in the G1, but that's Kenny Omega, and it literally, that's just him, he's like, Oh, that's how it's that pride thing with wrestlers, you know, where they go, "Oh, my ego can hold back any pain." And over at, at at the same time, you're like, "Yeah, I get your point, but I'm also like, I'm more worried about your health than anything else, sir." You're like, you know. By the way, yeah, apparently, this um, saying this is going to definitely be the last year for Sting because he just needs to just put it aside, pass the torch on them, um, Darby. Right. I mean, I, I think this whole storyline is just pretty much him showing Darby the ropes of everything that he's going right. to go through, win or lose. And then at the very right. end, he's going to be like, all right, that's it. I'm done. You're taking over the mantle now. Well, the, the reason I say Sting is going to have one more match with Cody, the reason I say this, and I give Cody a lot of shit, but one thing I will always say about him he is an extremely, extremely safe worker. Like, he he is a safe worker when it comes to other opponents. Like, I mean, hell, he was able to have a match with Shaq, who's never been in a wrestling ring. He's had a match with Stephen Amell. He's had matches with um, all these people that should have never really gotten into a wrestling ring. And he made them look great. And he's kept them safe. Sting is one of those guys. I could honestly see Cody could keep him safe. That's why, if there was anyone I could see Sting having one match for, it would probably be it would probably be Cody. Um, yeah, that, that, but that's, that's me. That's also what I've heard as well. I've heard like two of the safest wrestlers, oddly enough, are Geese. I mean, um, Cody, and um, actually King Corbin, oddly enough. Yeah. I heard that too. I heard he's a very safe worker. Uh, Seth is not. <laughs> Seth is a very unsafe worker. Obviously. Uh, I, well, I've well, there's there's no one safer. Like, there's no one safer. Like I would put my life in the hands of uh, of uh, Nia Jax any day. <laughs> my who? <No. laughs> uh, you've seen that video, right? The my hole with Nia Jax. Yeah. 
It's like suddenly WWE yeah. ratings just jumped up. The you know the not, not you know the. Uh, did you see Age the thing that happened? Or whatever. Was dying literally the week after that. The week after this, and I'm not joking. You could tell it was not scripted because Shayna Baszler was trying so hard not to fucking laugh. But they had on Raw Talk the week after she fell and did the my whole thing. Our truth was uh, was sitting on Raw Talk, and you know they're like, "Did someone say dominant?" And you know the shit they were doing, and he's all like, "Oh, oh, Naya, I, I'm glad you're here. I actually brought you a gift." And he pulls out a fucking hemorrhoid donut, <laughs> to to Naya. and literally Shayna was trying so hard not to laugh, and you could see Naya's face like, "You fucking asshole." I was laughing so hard. Hey, oh, just man. know that our truth cares. Exactly. Oh man. I think we should end it here. Yeah, well, well, I think, we well, I think yeah, the perfect place to wrap this up is with uh, Nia Jax's hole. So, uh, <laughs> oh my god. But um, yeah. So we'll see, so we'll see what's going on, guys. Obviously, you'll be watching this or listening to this before the actual event. We'll see what happens with uh, AEW Double or Nothing 2021, and we'll compare. We'll touch base again on this. Uh, I do want to say, I just, I was looking through uh, Instagram real quick. It looks like um, AEW Rampage will actually premiere this very August 13th uh, on uh, on TNT, which surprises me because I thought that was going to be like a next year thing, but like, damn, already, like, oh, okay, guys. So that's interesting, but um, yeah, we'll see what happens there. And we'll see if they convert the TNT title into a TBS title. I, I don't know. We'll see what happens there. But anyways, guys, uh, this is uh, Mark Rodriguez here. We'll see you next time. Hey, so this is Johnny Rodriguez. Thanks for the invite. This was a very good, interesting podcast. And, you know, let's see what happens at the actual main events. Uh, this is Will, uh, a.k.a. Ninja Panda 1980. Be sure to check out my Instagram where I'm doing the Street Fighter V AEW series. This is Jack from Jack Knives Reviews. Check out my hypothetical series on my channel. And uh, so DJF had to leave early. And, um, you know, we'll also say uh, goodbye here on behalf of the people that couldn't be here, like Chuck Rodriguez, Ricky Rocks, and Ninja Jupy. So, um, yeah, we'll see you all next time, guys. Thanks for coming. And catch you on the flip side. Like they say, uh, you know, you got to be good. And if you can't be good, it'd be bad, baby. See you later.